I'm about to go into an interview, so I'm going to make this really, really quick. Somebody sent me a screenshot today. I believe it was NFL Hall of Famer, former Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens, I believe he was engaged in a conversation with radio talk show host, actor and comedian D.L. Hughley, if memory serves me correctly. And during his conversation with D.L. Hughley or between within this conversation between D.L. Hughley and Terrell Owens, both men I respect, both men I have a lot of admiration for. I met Terrell Owens briefly on the Sky Train in Atlanta at the airport en route to my terminal to take my flight to London, England about 10 years ago. We briefly shook hands and that was all there was to it. But the conversation centered around Terrell Owens saying that because of his color, maybe because of his looks, black women did not pay him a lot of, of attention growing up. I'm not sure when this stopped, whether it stopped when he became a high school athlete. I don't know if it stopped when he became a collegiate athlete. I don't know if it stopped when he became an NFL superstar. Now, Terrell Owens isn't the only black celebrity who uses this excuse. And I love Terrell Owens. I'm a, I'm a fan of Terrell Owens, so there's no issue there. But I'm tired of black celebrities and black men in general when it comes to the snow bunny crisis. When it comes to the snow bunny crisis, when it comes to the snow bunny crisis, I'm tired of Terrell Owens. I don't know if Chad Ochocinco used that. I believe Childish Gambino expressed similar sentiments. And I hope I'm not misrepresenting any of those brothers. I didn't hear about Chad Ochocinco. That's what you're telling me now. I, I don't know about Chad saying this. But Terrell Owens has said this. Childish Gambino has said this. Tons of other black men, be they professional, celebrity, or just everyday, hardworking black men. Many black men have argued the reason that they are bunny hopping. Many black men have argued the reason that they are bunny hopping. I don't know if Shannon Sharp would be included in that. I don't know if Shannon said that he didn't get attention from black women younger in life or not. I don't know. That's what you guys are posting now. But no matter who said it, no matter who said it, no matter when they said it, no matter where they said it, I want any black man who wants to use the excuse that the reason you're dating black white women now, the reason you are bunny hopping the reason you are bunny hopping in your 40s is because you got rejected by black girls in your teenage years. That doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. So you're bunny hopping with white women in your 40s because you got turned down from sisters in your 20s. That doesn't make any, any sense to me at all. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. So you're telling me that you're suffering from Post-traumatic rejection disorder. That's what you're telling me. Terrell Owens, you suffer from post-traumatic rejection disorder. That's what you're telling me. That's what you're telling me. So since the black girls didn't like you in elementary school, you bunny hopping with white women in your 40s. Since black girls didn't like you in high school, you bunny hopping with white girls in your 50s. Because black women rejected you in college, you're now bunny hopping with white women in your 30s, 40s, and 50s. That's an excuse. Black men, that's an excuse. Stop using black women as an excuse for your bunny hopping. Stop using black women as an excuse for your bunny hopping. Let's look at all the rejection we get from white folks. Let's draw a parallel here. Let's draw a psychological parallel. Look at all the rejection black people suffer at the hands of white people. We get mistreated in white people's restaurants, but yet we still go back. We get mistreated in white people's shopping centers, 
and yet we still go back. We get mistreated in white people's grocery stores, and yet we still go back. We get mistreated at white people's universities, and yet we still go back. We get mistreated in white people's neighborhoods, and yet we still go back. We get mistreated on white people's jobs, and yet we do not quit the job. So you mean to tell me, when white people mistreat you, it's okay to go back to them. When white people undermine you, it's okay to go back to them. When white people marginalize you, it's okay for you to go back to white people. But because black girls suffering from the same self-hatred you suffer from, because black girls suffering from the same self-hatred you suffer from, rejected you, teased you, and ignored you in 6th and 7th grade. Let, let, let me make sure I understand this. Because teenage black girls bullied and teased you in high school. You're going to use that as an excuse for why you're bunny hopping in your 30s, 40s, and 50s. Get your ass up out of here with that. Get your ass up out of here with that. And I'm not directing this to Terrell Owens per se. It's funny I'm talking about Terrell Owens and I got on Eagles Green right now. It's funny I'm talking about Terrell Owens and I got on Eagles Green right now. It's funny I'm talking about Terrell Owens and I got on Eagles Green right now. But this is not about Terrell Owens. This is not about Terrell Owens. This is about all black men and any black men. From Alabama to Australia. From London to Louisiana. From Canada to Turks and Caicos. From Brooklyn to Botswana. From Johannesburg to New Jersey, any black man in the African diaspora, any black man on the planet Earth who is bunny hopping. I don't care if you're brown bunny hopping, white bunny hopping, yellow bunny hopping or red bunny hopping. If you are bunny hopping, you are showing the world that you have no faith in yourself. You have no love for your race. You have no commitment to your community. And most of all, no loyalty to the black woman that gave birth to you. And most of all, no loyalty to the black woman that gave birth to you. And most of all, no loyalty to the black woman that gave birth to you. Now, let me segue to Deion Sanders really quickly. Let me segue to Coach Prime really quickly. First of all, I want to say this. I rooted for Colorado last Saturday. I watched the game. I rooted for them. And the reason I rooted for them is I do not appreciate. I do not appreciate white men scheming and strategizing to undermine the opportunity of a black man. I don't like it in corporate America. I don't like it in public education. I don't like it in sports. For other coaches around the NCAA to share information, to share information with each other in hopes of destroying this black man's success, it was distasteful. It was distasteful. I also happen to be a fan of Shador Sanders. I don't blame Shador Sanders for going with his father from Jackson State to Colorado because that's his father. I think we can all understand that. So I'm not upset with the sons of Dion going from Jackson State to Colorado. That's their father. He's the leader of that family. Even though they're young men, he's the leader. I don't blame Shador. I happen to be a fan of Shador Sanders. I think that young man can one day be one of the greatest quarterbacks who ever played in the NFL. This brother is throwing three, four, 500 yards like it's nothing. Running for two or three touchdowns a game like it's nothing. He outplayed the Heisman winner. Shador Sanders outplayed the Heisman winner in that game against USC. But let me get back to my point. Even though 
I'm standing in solidarity with Deion Sanders against the white hate because white people don't like to see black people do well. They don't even like to see one of us do well, not when it is in competition with them. Deion Sanders is on target to revolutionize Division I football. He's on target to do that. So some of you are going to say, well, wait a minute, Dr. Umar. Wait a minute. I thought you was against him leaving Jackson State. I am. him leaving Jackson State. He should have never done it. Because when Deion Sanders leaves the NCAA for the NFL, what would have been the sum total benefit to the black community? Zero. All the money he's making for Colorado, all the championships he may win at Colorado, all the white coaches he's going to defeat at Gal at, Gal at, at, at that he's going to defeat at Colorado, all the game changing he's doing as a black head coach in a white male dominated profession. What will be the sum total of Dion's contribution to the black community when he leaves Colorado? It's a zero. So I'm never backing down from my premise. He should have never abandoned the HBCU league. I'm ride or die HBCU. I'm ride or die HBCU. I'm ride or die HBCU. But I'm standing in solidarity because I don't like when white people target black males. So I just wanted to clear that up, brothers and sisters. Everything Dion achieves at Colorado, it's for Dion. And we as black people have to get over this insatiable need to prove our worthiness to Caucasians. I can't believe we're still trapped in that mindset. 400 years later. And we are still trapped in a mindset that says we have to prove to white people that we can coach. We have to prove to white people. Stop calling me. I'm live. We have to prove to white people that we can coach. We have to prove to white people that we can do science. We have to prove to white people that we can be mentally gifted. We have to prove to white people that we can run our own business. We have to prove to white people that we can control our emotions. I'm sick and tired of black people feeling like they have to integrate with white people to prove to white people that we are capable. Who are they for us to have to prove anything to? Who are they for us to have to prove anything to? Who are they for us to have to prove anything to? And Coach Prime is guilty of that. Coach Prime is guilty of that. He could have done the same thing at Jackson State. But he could have created a system that would have saved HBCU sports and HBCU universities forever. He chose money over the movement. I understand Dion is not that man. But what I can say is I appreciate Deion Sanders for being the father that he is. Watching him and his son work together, watching him and his son walk out on that field together, dismantling all the stereotypes that black men don't love their children, black men don't want to raise their children. That man is present and available for all his sons, the ones who play on the field and the ones who don't, including his daughter, who's going to be a basketball player. So as a father, Deion Sanders gets an A++. As a father, he gets an A++. But as a black man committed to the best interests of the black community, he gets an F. It's no different than LeBron James. As a father, LeBron James gets an A++. As a responsible black man, LeBron James gets an A++. As a black man committed to the black community, he gets an F. Because there were too many times he could have done something, not say something, but done something, not say something, but done something, not say something, to change things in the black community. Now for the Negro peons in the chat saying how long Dion should have stayed at Jackson State, I'm not going to entertain that with you because for you to even ask that question tells me you understand nothing I'm talking about. You have no space in your heart to sacrifice for your people. You have no space in your heart to be loyal to your people. You have no space in your heart to work or struggle for your people. So for a Negro, to push back against what I'm saying, you're just letting me know you are one of those Negro opinions. That's all you're telling me. Because we are in the age 
of the disloyal black man. We are in the age where black men no longer give a damn about what happens to the black community. Not just the celebrities, but everyday pookies and ray rays. Everyday pookies. We are in the age of the black man no longer being committed to the black community. It's a shame. And it's very sad. I was at the Museum of the American Revolution today studying some of the sacrifices of our great black men of the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century. Yes, I can blame you. Stop being a damn coward. If we put half the attention into building the community that we put into following sports, if we put half the energy into building the community that we put into chasing women, if we put half the energy into the black community that we spend marrying white girls, if we put half the energy into the community that we spend flossing and dripping and looking good and competing with each other and running our mouth on social media and gossiping and slandering, if we put half the energy in the black community that we put in everything else we do, we'd be free already. We'd be free already. So to Terrell Owens and any other black man out there, don't use black women as the excuse. Don't say because black women didn't give you no attention in high school, you won't consider dating one in your 40s. That's ridiculous. White people have rejected us for 400 years and yet we crawl black. White people have been rejecting us for 400 years and yet we and yet we crawl back. White people have been rejecting us for 400 years and yet we crawl back. So don't tell me because a few black girls teased you in high school. You so traumatized that you can only date white girls. That is an excuse. That is an excuse. You are a bunny hopper. Look in the mirror and tell all your female ancestors. All the black women of your family tree going back thousands of years. I want you to look in the mirror and tell your queen mother ancestors, thousands of black women who are responsible for you being on this planet. And I want you to look in the mirror and tell all your female ancestors, you're not good enough for me. Look your black ass in the mirror, Charles Barkley. Look your black ass in the mirror, Joel Embiid. Look your black ass in the mirror, any Negro without a black woman, and tell all your female ancestors, all those queen mothers from the beginning of civilization, you're not good enough for me. You're not good enough for me. I had to go bunny hop. Peace and pan-Africanism.